Hi, I'm Josh with Tactical Tech, and today we're going to show you how to get your equipment set up on the Ames database. This is a time-consuming process, but instrumental piece in the Ames system. To illustrate the how-to, we will be utilizing a platoon size element as a package with squads representing boxes. Each squad will be assigned the listed equipment. We will be building this using the Enterprise Edition of Ames, which comes in a rare or zip file. When you open this file, you will notice three files contained inside, two front ends and one back end. The back end file, when uncompressed, should be stored on a network share that all users have read-write access to. The basic front end will be placed on the computers of your limited users, while the master front end will be placed on the computer of your more advanced users or yourself. To set up our database today, we will utilize the master front end. When you open this file, it is likely that you will be prompted with a warning statement that this database is being launched from an untrusted location. Click the Options button followed by Enable this content and OK in order to proceed. Following, there will be a window that pops up prompting you for the location of the back end. Browse to your back end on your network share and click OK. It could take a minute or so for it to update the location. Now to set the front ends as a trusted location, eliminating the warning that you will see when you open the database, go to the Office button Access Options, Trust Center, Trust Center Settings, and Trusted Locations. From there, add New Location and browse to the folder where your front end is stored and click OK. If you see the Getting Started window, you can close it as it will not be covered in this tutorial. The first thing you should do prior to adding your equipment is get familiarized with the Descript IDs already placed in the database. Under the Advanced Options, choose Manage Equip Descript IDs. You want to get familiarized with what is already in this table before adding your own equipment. This is essentially a catalog of equipment that you could order along with the information unique to each piece of equipment, such as weight, NSN, LIN, etc. Just because the equipment is listed in this table does not mean that you have it in your inventory, so it is suggested that you don't delete anything out. The key thing you want to do with this table is ensure that you have no more than one listing or name to script ID for the same type of equipment. In other words, you don't want to have two entries for the same type of VGA cable. You also want to double check the LINs, NSNs, and nomenclatures for the preloaded Descript IDs against what you have in your possession in your inventories, such as a D830 might be different listed as listed on your unit level hand receipt. With that said, most of the squad equipment is not yet in this table because it was built by an IT guy, so let's go ahead and add it in. Go to Add Descript IDs. On the Managing Descript ID table, click New Asset. The first asset we will load is a Halligan tool. It will fit nicely under the Tool category, so we click the drop-down menu and select Tool. This will become part of the, the first part of the Descript ID name. In the following window, it will require you to enter a description of the item that will become the, part of the second part of the Descript ID. Press Add Descript ID, and in the next window you will be asked to enter information about the equipment. Ensure that, at the least, you have an ARC code, the weight, unit of issue, and the price. To include a picture of the item, find one online, save it to your hard drive, then double-click on the paperclip icon, Add, and browse to and select the picture you saved. Next we will add CLP. Again, go to New Asset. CLP is a lubricant for rifles, and currently the closest category that we have that this may fit into is a drink, which is definitely not good enough. 
So we will add a new category by clicking Manage Categories. Scroll down to the asterisk at the bottom and we will create a new category for non-consumable liquids called fluids. Under the description, put a vague description. Close that window and go back to the Add Item window. Press the F5 key on your keyboard to refresh the drop-down box and then select Fluid and Continue. Fill out the information as we did before and I will continue this process with the rest of the squad equipment off camera. Now that we have our definitions for equipment, we'll have to define the packages and boxes that they will be organized in. On the main menu, open packages and we'll call this first package Charlie 3 Pack for Charlie Company 3rd Platoon. Now we would create the boxes associated with the pack either by double clicking the package or going to the box table through the main menu. We'll create three boxes, one for each squad. Even though, e even though each box is in a unique package, it is always good to give each box a unique name to that box alone just to avoid confusion later on. So we'll name our box Charlie-3-1-Squad and so on for each squad. We have one more step before we enter our equipment into the database. We must define our unit level hand receipts. Back at the main menu, under Advanced Options, Database Management, navigate to Manage Unit Level Hand Receipt Numbers. In this window, define the unit level hand receipt number that the equipment is in according to your PBO. We'll put HR01 for ours. We can now start adding in our equipment. On the main menu, under Advanced Options, go to Master Manifest. From here, let's add in all the squad equipment for our first squad. When you start typing in the Descript ID and the boxes, the name should be auto-suggested from the table entries you just put in. Ensure that if it is a non-expendable item that you include a serial number. If it is on the property book, you must check the property book item check and assign it to the correct unit level hand receipt. You may also assign it to a location, although it is not necessary for this database to operate. Once you have the default squad equipment entered, we can select all of the equipment and copy-paste into the same table, then reassign the newly assigned or newly copied equipment to the next squad. We can repeat this process for our third squad as well. Now that our equipment is in the database, there are three more tables that we must visit and fill prior to putting it to use. Back at the main menu, under Basic Links, choose Contacts. Here we will enter in those who will be signing for the equipment, signing it out, and key staff members such as the PBO, IASO, S4, and Battalion XO. You can enter them directly on the table or open New Contact and enter them in more detailed information. If they are a key staff member, ensure that they are associated with the appropriate special duties so their name will appear in the appropriate generated documents. The next thing we have to do is enter in our DODAC information. From the main menu under Advanced Options, Database Management, open Manage DODACs in this table. Put in your company's DODAC information, your PBO DODAC information, DRMO or SSA's DODAC information, and any maintenance provider DODACs, such as ELM or the motor pool. Once complete, we have one more small bit of information to enter in the RIC page. From the main menu under Advanced Options, Database Management, Manage Routing Identification Codes. Here enter in your RIC from your SSA or DRMO. All of this information should be known by your PBO. So it is suggested that you link up with them to get the information if you are not sure. 
If you have already completed the long process of entering your contacts and equipment, congratulations, your database is now ready to use. Your investment of time shall now save you time and paperwork nightmares later. Again, we thank you for downloading the Ames database and encourage you to watch our next video on Ames Basic Training.